And do you know, Diane, do. that he was allowed to kill innocent people who the security services knew to be innocent and torture Douglas. and kill them to keep his, his, his cover? That's what I'm saying. That is no excuse. No, of course, but what I'm saying is, I'm what I say in my film, Mara. You are about to see Douglas Murray take on a woke feminist and completely silence her with facts. The conversation was around how governments like the US and UK should respond to terrorists following recent terror attacks committed by radical Islamists. Should they be tortured as a way of interrogation? Douglas Murray presents a reasoned answer that goes against the woke mob's binary view. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Now, isn't it a bit of an understatement when you say, quote, the CIA may have fallen short of America's highest standards in the period after 9-11? Now, it isn't the truth, is that the CIA employed torture on an industrial scale. Well, I do think it's worth bearing in mind, first of all, before getting the allegations, that the dispute over this uh, report, uh, the Republicans uh, on the committee did not uh, agree with the findings. In fact, they stepped away quite early on. It's also important to remember that the uh, inquiry did not ask or speak to and get evidence from any of the, of the people who are actually serving at the top of the CIA at the time that this was meant to be going on. And that is a serious thing. Now, both the minority report and the CIA strongly dispute a lot of the major findings in this. But then but, we but do, do have but, to... But do you deny that there was some serious <laughs> interrogation which in most no, people's no, eyes absolutely. would be torture? Absolutely. No, I don't deny that. And it's clear, even from what the CIA is willing to say that it has happened and what it concedes, is that on a, on a number of occasions, they undoubtedly went far beyond what was meant to happen. And that is the sort of thing which is why we need inquiries like this. And can I just, one other point. Okay. You know, the late Democrat Senator uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan uh, said, and it's a very true, uh, true thing to say, he said, the number of human rights complaints in a society tend to be in exactly inverse proportion to the number of human rights uh, violations in a society. In other words, we hear about this in America. We've heard about this in recent days. In fact, we've heard about it over recent years precisely because America right. is a society it is. And we have to be very careful, I think, I, about the criticism. Um, Douglas Murray's perspective on the harsh interrogation methods employed by agencies like the CIA offers a nuanced examination of human rights discourse and societal perceptions. By quoting Daniel Moynihan's astute observation that the volume of complaints about human rights violations often inversely correlates with the actual prevalence of such violations, Murray highlights the complexity of assessing human rights records. In societies like the US and UK where complaints are widespread and freedoms are fiercely protected, individual instances of rights violations are scrutinized intensely, reflecting a robust commitment to human rights protection. Murray's commentary delves deeper into the broader context of Western society's self-reflection and activism. He acknowledges the importance of holding governments and institutions accountable for any transgressions against human rights. However, he also warns against succumbing to a narrative of inherent Western guilt or hypocrisy. Western societies, despite their imperfections, offer unparalleled levels of freedom, opportunity, and protection of individual rights compared to many other parts of the world. One aspect often overlooked in discussions about human rights is the necessity of balancing security concerns with civil liberties. In the context of counterterrorism efforts, agencies like the CIA may resort to controversial methods in the pursuit of national security. While such methods undoubtedly raise ethical questions, they also require a sober assessment of the challenges faced by governments in safeguarding their citizens from extremist threats. Um, I'm horrified that Douglas would seek to minimise what went on. It wasn't playing Kylie Minogue on a loop or slapping people. It was plumping, it was pumping fluids up people's rectums until their insides burst. It was me making people stand on limbs which were broken in two places That's... for hours and hours. One man died as part mm -hmm. of this process of torture. Douglas, you and I were both British. Sure. When did the British systematically condone torture? Can Don't I give the an British. To that? No, let me finish. Okay, sure. Surely, if British values mean anything, mm -hmm. we there may have been slips, there may have been things we didn't do that were perfect. But if British values mean anything, we do not condone torture. Let me say well, one no, more. No, 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 no. Let him come back. You've can had a very good say. It's a very, it's, it's very it's well a very put. important point. I agree with you, Dan. 
all of us are against torture, as I said in the film. The problem is there are a set of degrees. There is, a, there is no question, Dan... Well, what about that, the degree the Diane is Exactly, there's no question. I mean, it doesn't if that get did much occur, worse no. than that unless you Andrew, start if hacking that people's... Did occur, if that did occur, and the CIA else. and the minority representatives dispute that it occurred, if that did occur, Diane, obviously that's wrong, obviously that has to be addressed, and we hope that it will be in the weeks and days well, shouldn't ahead. The people, just... if, they, if they did this, shouldn't the people who did this, shouldn't they be charged? Can I just come back to the more... Shouldn't important... they face a court? Can I just come back to the, the important thing that Diane's raised? When have we behaved like this? On no, I didn't, on, say, Diane, I didn't say. I didn't say when finish, have we behaved like that. I said when I have we, my point? as British people, can I finish torture? my point? As I said in the film, film, these things are very messy. On 9/11. Uh, America lost more people than this country did for 30 years in Northern Ireland. And let me give you a quick example. Incidentally, you can read about it in my book on Bloody Sunday, okay. which talks about the violations this state did in Northern Ireland, not just the gunning down of people. And let me just give you an example. There was a period in Northern Ireland in the 80s when this country allowed a person who became the head of the internal nutting squad in the IRA, the man who tortured and executed people within the IRA, to operate. He was a British agent, Diane. His name was that... State Knight. And do you know, Diane, that he was allowed to kill innocent people who the security services knew to be innocent and tortured and killed him to keep his, his, his cover? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That is no excuse. No, of course. But what I'm saying is, I'm and what I say in my film, right. Diane, is that people do things like this in these extraordinary situations. Right, and we I, okay, no, 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 that. enough. Most British people, Douglas, do not take torture as lightly no. as you no. do. Oh, I and they, want, they, like they want to know what, you, what the British what government What do you think, knew. Douglas, about our I don't our take role. it lightly, Diane. What I'm saying, and what I think you should take seriously, is that when another attack happens, as has happened before, the British people immediately afterwards say, why wasn't this stopped? That is also a very powerful question. I wonder if I can and ask when they on other fail questions. to answer oh, well. it, we need to address that. Douglas Murray is right again on this one. In societies like the UK where terrorism strikes evoke widespread fear and uncertainty, there's a natural inclination for the populace to seek explanations and accountability. However, Murray's point isn't to justify extreme measures like torture. Rather, it underscores the immense pressure and complexity faced by governments in addressing security threats while upholding civil liberties. Murray's critique extends to modern activism, which he sees as sometimes mired in a one-sided focus on Western wrongdoing while ignoring atrocities committed by authoritarian regimes elsewhere. This selective outrage, according to Murray, undermines the credibility of human rights advocacy and fails to address the complex geopolitical realities that shape global affairs. Moreover, Murray delves into a deeper societal issue concerning the erosion of identity and pride in Western societies. Polling data now indicates a declining willingness among Western populations to defend their countries in times of war. This trend reflects a broader narrative of self-doubt and self-criticism prevalent in Western societies, where historical achievements and values are often overshadowed by a narrative of guilt and oppression. In recent decades, Western societies have increasingly embraced narratives that portray the West as the historical oppressor, perpetuating injustices both domestically and globally. This narrative has led to a loss of confidence in Western institutions and values, as well as a reluctance to defend them against external threats. Furthermore, the oppressor-oppressed narrative perpetuates a skewed understanding of global dynamics, painting the West as the perpetual villain and discounting the complexities of international relations. By viewing everything through this binary lens, Western societies risk undermining their own sense of unity, purpose, and resilience in the face of adversity.